Okay. Do we have audio? Twitch chat. Do we have audio? Do we have audio? What flickers? What flickers? I work. We have light. Are we good? Does it work? Okay, it's all good. So, I don't know what's going on with this camera, but I'm like super not impressed right now because we were doing, um, did you, if you saw that, uh, that unboxing we did of the Kraken X40 where we were doing a dual cam setup, we were using XSplit to record the uh, both, both camera angles and we were trying to capture audio to the FS or through the FS and it wasn't working. It was popping and doing a lot of crazy sounds and stuff. Yeah, but it wasn't, I don't think it was as bad as what... Uh, yeah, well, I, I think it's the problems that there was already plus the fact of like putting it through XSplit, which is like barely working and then streaming it online to all these people. Like the combination of all those things probably just made it so much worse. But basically that, that puts me in a position where I'm kind of sitting here going, well, how does, how's this supposed to work? Because I can record audio just fine to SD on this guy. But something about outputting to HDMI suddenly doesn't work. Guys, this is the exact setup that we were using for live streams in the past. And we didn't change anything. And uh, yeah, so I mean, we're sorry, but I don't know what else to tell you because tonight... We sat down to prep for the live stream an hour ago and we should have been just ready to go and everything should have just been fine. But we got about, I don't know what, half a dozen blue screens on the editing computer that ended up, irony of ironies, being caused by our Avermedia Live Gamer HD. Which usually is totally solid. Compared to the Black Magic cards which usually crash and cause all kinds of random horrible problems. Um, but I think it might be because we were using the bottom PCIe 4X slot on a Z77 board, which is routed through the chipset rather than being routed directly to the CPU. So, um, yeah, that sucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one other thing, as I've seen a couple times posted in the Twitch chat, as you may have heard, the forum is kind of alive. Uh, it's down right now because of physical server relocation, meaning yes. DNS servers that are everywhere have to repopulate and refigure out where my server is so that you guys can go to the forum. Good news is um, everything will be exactly how it was the minute before I brought the server down. So you're not going to lose your posts. You're not going to lose your accounts. Yep. You're not going to lose whatever you had. It's just going to be down until something somewhere decides that Everyone can now see the forum. And we're really thrilled with how much traction there's been on the forum already. I mean, you guys have been uh, amazing. And I don't think even that many of you know about it yet. Um, yeah, I mean, do, do, any of, do any of you guys know yet? Uh, there's, there's a few people. One guy's saying, what is the IP screw waiting for the DNS? I can't do that um, <laughs> <laughs> because the HT access file... Uh, in my Apache folder is pointing certain things in certain places based off of the URL name. So if you go to the uh, IP address, it's just like an FTP site, basically. So it's not really going to help you very much. Um, Nexium, my buddy, and I have been spending incredible amounts of time. Huge thanks to him. He's done tons of things that I have no idea what he's doing. It's all voodoo magic. He's a huge part of the reason, pretty much the reason why the forum was up at all. So thanks, Nexium. Um, but we've been slaving away making VB5, VBulletin5 work at all. It's incredible. We are the only site that I know of that's actually a production website, not like, not like an example website hosted by VBulletin that's actually running this software. Um, and there's a lot of things that are broken, like editing posts, as a lot of you have probably already noticed, just doesn't work. Like you can edit the post, but when it goes to the edit screen your post isn't there so it's <laughs> it's kind of weird like there's a lot of stuff that's broken like that that we can't fix because that's based on vbulletin um there's a lot of stuff that's going around that we can fix that is kind of messed up the vbulletin has like hold on hold on hold on hold on got it okay go ahead <laughs> uh <laughs> i was worried for a sec 
um, like different sizes for attachments and stuff. The defaults for that are very weird and not what they actually say. When it tells you like, oh, it has to be these dimensions at this size, it's not actually those dimensions of that size. So we are looking into prob problems that we <coughs> can fix. Um, and hopefully VBolton Beta 24 is, as Nexium would say, the holy grail of <laughs> beta releases. And hopefully it fixes everything. But other than that, uh, the form's working pretty okay. The main problem we actually had was speed, which is the reason why we did the relocation. And we pulled it from here, where it was running on a line that was 5 megabits per second up. Um, megabit. Megabit. That's you yeah. know what I said? I think you said megabytes per second. I meant to say megabits per second. Um, to a line at NCX head office, which I was hoping was going to be 40 megabits per second up, but is actually, now that we got there, 25. But that's still incredibly faster yeah. from what we have right now. To and we'll hopefully get above the bottleneck that we're currently sitting on. To be clear, guys, this isn't an NCIX forum. This is a Linus Tech Tips dedicated forum. They're just uh, sponsoring us the bandwidth <laughs> increase that we need for now. We're hoping to move either to an off-site host somewhere or get some kind of like baller internet connection here, uh, which may, may actually be an option. I mean, we can pick ourselves up a load balancing router for about... 150 bucks and then Shaw has a new service they're rolling out here that's going to be 15 megabit up we can pull two lines in so we might be able to do 25 to 30 megabit per second up from here which yeah. would be that would be really cool sort of redonkulous I would like to have the server on site we're hardware guys so it's cool to be able to like actually manage the server here um, yeah but you had to do some kajiggering to be able to manage it off-site with actually you should tell them about the config you have going right now <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous. So there's two servers right now. There's two servers right now. One of them's Windows. One of them's Linux. We're trying to move everything over to the Linux box, but then um, we couldn't like properly SSH into the Linux box. So oh, Nexium and I spent ridiculous amounts of time today just trying to make it so that we could actually connect to the boxes on NCX's network because they have us behind like layers of networking. So it's kind of odd trying to control things when I have no control over the routers or the switches. So I'm just like calling up the networking guy every once in a while. I'll be like, hey, I need this kind of changed. <laughs> so that was a very interesting situation. Hey, hey it's me again. <laughs> hey, can, you, can you please do this? Please. <laughs> I need access, please. And everything ended up being kind of ghetto rigged, but is working. And yeah. Well, we're at CES. Um, I've got I've got one super moderator set up, and I've got a few moderators set up. Um, everyone's kind of on a trial basis right now, um, so watch those moderators. Let me know what you think of them. Make sure they're all doing fair play. Um, I think they're all really. They seem like really good guys. I like the moderators so far, but we need to make sure that they're all actually really good guys. Um, so pay attention to them. But the only admin that's going to be running online, so the only guy that's going to be like controlling the back end of the site while we're at CES is going to be Nexium. So, good luck to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. We appreciate it. <laughs> Oy, what if it goes down? Uh, if it, like, actually, if the computer powers down and doesn't, like, turn back on, so, like, if it doesn't restart or anything like that, and we're at CES, we're kind of screwed. Okay. Um, because it's sitting in a room that... So basically don't to. DDoS us, is what we're that trying to say. That would be greatly like, appreciated. Don't, don't, like, don't go to the NCIX head office and cut the power lines. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't do that anyway. <laughs> These are things I shouldn't have to say. So far, everybody on the forum and everybody on Twitter and everything has been super helpful. That's really nice. Uh, reporting problems is great. Reporting stuff like it's slow. Like, that's good that you told me, but... We know. We know it's slow. Part of it is the 5 megabit connection we've been on. Part of it is the fact that vBulletin 5 is just kind of a dog. Yeah. Uh, when we browse on it locally, there's still that delay. Like when you click on a thread, the page populates, and then there's like one, two, three steamboats before you can actually click on something. We, we can't stress enough, the back end for the forum, vBulletin 5, is still in a pretty brutal stage of beta. 
Um, so there's a lot yeah. of stuff that we can't control. One of the members of the V Bulletin community was calling it was calling it some kind of a travesty that they're even calling this a beta. Yeah, and he's like a pretty esteemed member of the V Bulletin community. Max possible reputation points, thirty thousand posts, like really big guy and he's raging about he's it. like this so. is an alpha this is not a beta yeah and we're running it on production <laughs> yeah <laughs> so hang with us things will be fixed some yep. of it's out of our control and i'm going as fast as i can with nexium to fix everything else that is within our control all right so why don't we uh let's do some twitter shall we or oh okay the angle's a little funny we actually don't have the Ooh, is this going to cause problems? <laughs> we don't have a mount for the camera, so it's sitting on a cardboard sheet on top of the actual tripod. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have the tools handy to remove the stupid mounting plate from the FS. And we're trying to get this back up as soon as we possibly could, so uh, it's okay. It's just not worth you it. You could use a quarter. I don't have a quarter on me. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> All right, so let's do some Q&A. What's a good mechanical keyboard under 70 bucks? Cook Sorry. Fires. Well, they're not under 70 bucks. You can find them sometimes. 69.99. I think I've seen a quick fire like the tankless ones, 69.99. Okay, there you go. If you can find it possibly somewhere ever. Yeah, possibly somewhere ever. I mean, asking for mechanical keyboard under 70 bucks is me being like, "Hey, where can I get a good like Uber gaming graphics card for under 150 bucks?" It's like, "Well, sorry, it just just doesn't work that way." My jacket is ugly. <laughs> Matt asks, my CPU is an FX4100. It doesn't perform well in CPU heavy games. Will upgrading to an i5-3570K show me a noticeable difference? The answer is yes. Um, especially once you're overclocking. A 3570K yeah. will destroy an FX4100. FX4100 is basically, okay, think, think of it this way guys. Phenom 1 didn't actually really improve anything over previous um, what, I mean, what branding did they even use? Athlon 64s, I think, yeah. was what they used before yeah. that. Phenom 2 improved very little over Phenom 1. It was like an incremental, like, like, like a talk. And then FX didn't really improve anything over Phenom 2. <laughs> and then that's where you're at. So you're basically running an Athlon 64, whereas Intel has been marching along in terms of CPU performance. 3570K will just destroy a 4100. Uh, editing posts, that comes in the next beta of vBulletin, right? Supposedly, but it was also in previous betas. So... <laughs> this is what I was talking about, about brutal beta stage, is like, <laughs> features that used to be in it are not in it, and features that weren't in it before are in it. Like, it's, it's very much a beta, and then our version of it, like, what we've changed and stuff is still also in beta. So you're basically running the beta stage of a beta, is what your forum is, so. Yay! It's, it's hobbling along, we're doing good, but yep. yeah. Yep, uh, thoughts on PC360? I've heard it's a basier version of the 350. I'm not a big 350 fan. Okay, so it's probably better than the 350. I'd buy a 7H personally. I like, I like them a lot more than the 350s. Have you tried the 360? I never tried them. Uh, Harrison's got some. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're like actually, I like them quite a bit. Okay. For, for a headset, I'm not usually way into headsets. Right. I like headphones with a mic, but for a headset, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, they're really good. I built my first computer today. How come you never told me the back of the motherboard was pokey? <laughs> um, I didn't think of it. <laughs> you know what? Guys, when you're building your first computer, be careful of the metal on the outside of the power supply. It can be cold. We're teasing you, but it's all, it's all good. It's all good. You, you did good. Good work building your first computer. Feel free to post a picture of it on Facebook. Post a picture and post the specs. And when the forum's up, go yeah. to the new build section and yeah. post your build. Post your build, because that's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever built a Hackintosh? Um, that project is like kind of ready to go. Like I have the installer files on my USB drive that I'm ready to install on the motherboard that we brought back to the back to the lab today so hopefully soon but not before we go to ces ces yeah. is going to be like oh ridiculous all of our time before ces was kind of devoted to like finishing off projects and me starting and hopefully finishing but that didn't happen the forum 
Um, it might still happen. It's not going to be finished. Well, it's never finished. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, <laughs> sir. Um, yeah, but it's it's. It, I hope the forum comes live soon. I'm getting kind of worried. Um, what was I? Where was I going with this? CES is bad, and we yeah. won't finish anything before that. Really. No, and then even when we get get back from CES for the first day or two, we're probably going to be just like managing stuff that we didn't get to release while we we're at CES. And we'll whatnot. probably be sleeping because we'll probably be sick. I don't sleep. Every year I get like just super sick. <laughs> right, because there's like a million people there. Because you don't sleep. There's a million people there from all corners of the world where they've got all kinds of weird diseases that I've never been exposed to. <laughs> And, I was uh, going to say I've made it through PAX every year, but PAX is a weekend, not an entire week. So this will be this will be a new challenge. Oh, yeah. CES is, is a haul. See, Slick's never been to CES. This will be nope. my fourth or fifth year now. And it's, it, is, it is... People think it looks fun, but it's not fun. Linus, will EIPS make a huge difference from a TN panel? The answer is yes. Forum must be up because it's down. It won't load for me too much traffic. No, no, it's definitely down. It's down, like, not because of too much traffic or it being broken. We physically moved the server. Like, that's yeah. what we were doing this morning when you ran out of gas. Um. <laughs> it just hasn't been a good day in general, actually. No, not really. Like, the Tech Tips episodes, the, the NCIX Tech Tips episodes we filmed at, uh, at NCIX HQ today, one of them was, like, a build guide in an MATX machine that's actually within Silverstone's classification of small form factor. So this MATX tower system is actually not much taller than an MATX board. I can it's go. About this tall. Yeah, go get it. Go get it. We'll show it to them. I'll, I'll explain it in the meantime. So it's not much taller than an MATX board. We put dual GTX 680s in it. We put a 1,000 watt power supply. We put, um, I think we changed it. Is it, do you have it already? Oh, here we go. All right, so it's in the Sugo carrying case. And holy crap, this is one of the most difficult machines I've ever built. In spite of the fact that I did a full build guide on it. There you go. In spite of the fact that I did a full build guide on it, at the end of the video, I had no choice but to say, look guys, I don't recommend this for novice builders. So check this out. It's not actually much bigger than a shuttle. It's about the same length as a shuttle and it's about this much taller than a shuttle. It's got a 120 millimeter intake in the front. This is in the SG-09, okay? It's got, okay, one of the video cards is out now, but it had dual 680s in it. See, like I said, the MATX board goes from here to here. So it's that, that gives you some idea of the scale here. This is a 120 mil fan, not a 140. And I'm gonna see if I can get this, uh, this top panel off. So uh, entertain them with talk about uh, what we're doing at CES. What are we gonna do there? Uh, I'm gonna have lots of meetings. We, we've been so busy with other stuff, stuff, we haven't even discussed what we're gonna be doing at CES that much. So That's I okay, make it almost up. don't even know. <laughs> um, I know. We're going to be spending not as much time as I expected on the show floor because we have a lot of different suites to go do within the hotels, which will be like uh, a different vendor uh, will have like a suite where they'll show off specific parts because the show floor isn't big enough and not personal enough. Well, that and the show floor is extremely expensive and I don't think a lot of guys see the point. Yeah, if they can just hold a suite and then get in contact with the exact people they want to anyways, it's not really necessarily yeah. worth it for them. Um, so, yeah, the plan is we've got a pretty epic internet connection, hopefully. So we'll be hopefully shooting out videos actively while we're there. Yeah. We've noticed one big awesome. problem with reviewers that go down to the CES is that they don't release their stuff until, like, way after, and then it's usually pretty lackluster. So our plan is to be uploading it as fast as we can every single night. Okay, check this out. Sorry, stage two of showing you guys this machine. So this case holds two three and a half inch hard drives here and here. We have two SSDs in RAID 0 down there. That's two M4s right there. You can put another two SSDs here if you want. Slimline optical drive in the top. Okay, see that tower cooler in there? This thing is full of stuff. Plugging in, uh, see, I didn't look closely at the uh, at the instructions Silverstone includes for this case. RTM, guys, RTM. Uh, because 
And, okay, they, they also made a slight mistake because they show when you install the motherboard, they show the CPU heatsink installed on it. That's wrong. Because that sounds like a terrible idea. You have to install the motherboard, install the four pin, and then put the heatsink on. But I was thinking maybe I could put it on before it settled in or something like that. So anyway, I had a really hard time plugging the four pin in. I ended up having to take the heatsink off again to plug it in. And then, and then I realized, oh, I forgot to plug in the CPU fan <laughs> header. Not cool, not cool at all, but uh, here, I want to give you guys a closer look at this. I think it's on autofocus, so you should be able to see. So there's a Silverstone uh, dual tower heat pipe cooler. There's some high profile memory in there. This is a really cool cooler because it has one thick side and one thin side so that you have enough room for all your memory slots. Good idea, hey? There's the power supply right at the front there with a pass through to a uh, cord at the back. See right there? That's where that plugs in. And then uh, while you keep talking about CES plans, I'm going to take off the bottom part of the panel so they can see where the graphics cards go. Again, we haven't really talked about CES plans much, so I don't know. That's okay. <laughs> if, you, if you commit things to them now, then there's nothing I can do about it, and we'll have to do your ideas. So, so we're going to be eating out very nicely the entire time we're there. This all, is coming out all, of my pocket, All by sponsored the way. by the company. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Okay. We'll probably be eating McDonald's the entire time. Um, <laughs> You'll be lucky if you get McDonald's now. <laughs> um, yeah, Samsung has an interesting TV. Yeah. Releasing. They uh, released this press release. Go to, go to the, go to, uh, go to the All site. Right, we'll Here, try and find it. Uh, number, number, number four. Cut out the audio. Is there audio still? Is there audio now? Okay, so we can't show the... Yeah, we can. It's fixed now. Is it? Yeah. Don't worry, I fixed it. It's all good. It's all good. No audio. When you switch, it's gone. No, no there's audio, audio now. Audio fixed. Ah, everyone's so back and forth. Okay, here. Tell them, tell them about it. Okay, so as you can see there, Samsung released this picture and then some blurb about how like true innovation comes when you like change the shape of things. And all we got, something along those lines. Basically this huge thing about how they're changing the shape of the TV and then they released this picture. Which makes me think like, why, why is it in portrait mode? <laughs> and that's not really a different shape either. It's no. just a rotated shape. You turned it like this. Like well, I I'm... can't see you right now, but Oh right, okay. Well they turned it vertical okay, you into can portrait back. mode. Press one. Okay, now they can see us again. So I don't understand how this is different from taking an existing TV and just rip. <laughs> I like they they have a driver control panel for that. I think it's called, you know, the NVIDIA control panel or <laughs> ATI control panel. <laughs> Just turn your monitor. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of hoping it's more than just a portrait mode TV. Because I don't see a portrait mode TV being very applicable. Maybe the point they're trying to make is the extreme realism of the image and like how thin it is or something. It's an awful lot of hype to generate over... But then the second you try and watch a movie, is it going to be like half your screen is gone? No, there's no way it's a portrait mode TV. But look at the shape it's in. I know, but you could just take that shape and go like this. So what, are you just going to constantly swivel your TV? No, I mean, it might just be thinner. Oh, I don't know. But then this is, like I said, this is a lot of hype to generate over thinner. It's a shape. <laughs> and brighter and more vibrant and more 3D, which is what we Probably all... Probably what we, it is. Like, it, since I started going to CES, it's been nothing but 3D TVs. 
And here we are, what, three, four years later, and it's still 3D TVs. Mm. And I'm just kind of like, okay. So last year, the, the big thing was, um, was 3D TVs, but not using them for 3D. It was like having um, Clear crisp. alternating images so yeah. that two people could watch TV at something else at the same time. Yeah. Or not split screen, split screen gaming. Like uh, PlayStation TV. Yes, something like that. Has it, has it, okay, here, would love to hear this, guys. Has anyone on Twitter or, or, or in the Twitch chat actually encountered someone who is actually using that solution? Are we local recording as well? I don't know. Yeah, local recording. Yeah. Oh, press zero. Sweet. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. One of my old roommates. Where two people are playing the game at the same time, seeing different... Oh, the, that guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it really counts. So it was like Black Ops Zombies? That's exactly what it was. <laughs> Black Ops. Black Ops fanboy. <laughs> but only the zombie mod. I only knew that he did it once. I don't know if he did it other than that. And it was with like one of his buddies who also used to be a roommate of ours quite a while ago. Um... Yeah. I'm ready to show them the rest of this system now. Anyway. I don't have anything else so to say. So check this out, guys. So I had two GeForce graphics cards in here, two GTX 680s, so they were going all the way to here. There's the power supply. There's the CPU heatsink. You can put up to 32 gigs of RAM in here. Just a monster, monster machine. Check out that fan in the top. Just, like, almost hilariously, stupidly full of stuff. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is not that it's not a really cool case, and not that it isn't a really cool machine, but that it was really hard to build in. And because when you film a how to build a PC episode, there's no such thing as like running some benchmarks and doing some prep before the episode. You, like you, you, you can prep, you can sort of, you can read up on it, you can sort of like, you can fuss around with things and see how it all works, but you have to actually build it. You have to actually do every step. And some of them were just, Really hard yeah. to do. I was off in the corner with my crazy setup of multiple servers messing around with Nexium, hearing like, oh, oh, we gotta redo that. <laughs> I gotta take the motherboard out again. <laughs> <Just> like, oh. <laughs> I could hear the amount of frustrated that was on the other side of the room. You know what? It wasn't as bad as the FTO3 Mini one, though. That one's that was just a weird case. It's very cool. Very but cool. But it's interesting because it's a column. Yeah, it's column case. And uh, again, like an impressive amount of hardware in a small space, yeah, yeah. but but very dense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At least oh. the power supply was a lot easier on this one than it was on the FTO3 Mini. Because of the short cables. Because of the short cable kit that uh, you can get with Strider Series power supplies. So uh, here, let's do some Twitter. Oh, okay. Uh. You know what? I'll just do this. <laughs> okay, so put that there, get Twitter, get that. Where's the Twinkie box? Twinkie box is... Slicks in the way. Right there. All right, Linus, what tips do you have for up-and-coming tech people? Read lots. Reading lots is the most important thing for up-and-coming tech people. Go on our forum when it's up. Yeah. Hey, hey, that too. <laughs> going to be lots of up-and-coming tech people here. Uh, this is for Slick. Where can I get Ducky Keyboards? Uh, Tiger Imports. Google Tiger Imports. Is a CM Storm trigger with blue switches worth my money? What's a storm trigger? Same storm trigger. Did you unbox one? I was pretty sure you. No, unboxed. that was a quick fire. What's quick the difference fire. between a trigger oh, and a quick fire? I'm pretty sure you unboxed a trigger. Mm. I guess basically. They're good. They're they're quite good keyboards. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Yay! Tuning in at five thirty. We're sorry we're late, guys. They're crazy problems. Watch the uh, archive if Here, you're tuning in. Move now. closer to the camera. Look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I had no idea why you're making me go close to the camera. <laughs> uh, by Canon last time. I hate Sony. You reset it back to stock. So trust me, that won't fix the problem. Uh, and we are using a Canon now, which has this Canon camera has its own set of issues as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, Most we're definitely. back to like 24 minutes ago. So uh, I saw a whole bunch of people posting that they had never seen anyone do the split screen monitor thing. Yeah. I jumped over there while you're doing the system and like just everyone was like, nope. Nope. <laughs> definitely not. Nope, definitely not. Okay. 
Uh, here's a good question from Marcus. Um, what do you expect from AMD on, at CES? Expect? I'm going to go look for some of my topics that I had uh, that I had up. So I'll get you. What do you expect from AMD at CES? <laughs> I don't expect much. I hope <laughs> for a lot. Um, honestly, to be 100% honest, they haven't been moving that quickly lately over the last few years. Um, but they need to. So hopefully if they come out with some crazy awesome stuff at CES, that would be great. When They're... was the last time you had an AMD rig? Uh, Athlon 64. And then I built one for my parents that was Athlon 64X2. I love both those processors. They're amazing. Great, great, great processors. And then, yeah, ever since then. What about on the graphics card side? They've been starting to talk about 8000 series, particularly they, mobile. They do well on the graphics card side, though. ATI is very strong. AMD ATI is very strong. That you you can usually get more frames for your dollar, from what I've seen going with AMD cards. Um, whether that makes you buy them or not, that's totally up to you. Um, but yeah, usually you can you can pump them really hard. You can usually overclock them like crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I'm worried about the processor side. Very worried about the processor side. But then again, they could come up with something crazy. So hopefully they do. That'll be great at CES. I mean, I'd love to see how the whole... I mean, okay, we, we talked a little bit about the NVIDIA-Intel potential merger. The rumor. Just a rumor, guys, right now. But we talked a little bit about what that could mean for the future, maybe particularly on mobile, when you look at Intel's expertise on manufacturing, NVIDIA's expertise on GPU and their experience with ARM, and just, like, what kind of crazy processes we could see. I would love to see, I mean, they've talked about how they're going to focus more on it, and, I, oh, shoot, what was his name? Rory, I, don't remember. I, I can't remember. One of their CEOs yeah. got, got outed uh, not that long ago because he said he didn't care about mobile, and it seems like something they do want to do. But I'd love to see what AMD and ATI could deliver because the only reason that Tegra has any huge advantage over anything is that GeForce ecosystem. And yeah. I'm not even talking just the graphics performance of it because no. it's not that competitive compared to something like iPad. Like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> not today. <laughs> or, or, even, or, or even some of the other solutions. Um, but the GeForce ecosystem is the developer relationships. It is the the way that they're used to writing games that are powered by GeForce. Compatibility, developer relationships, yes. stuff always working. The fact that a Tegra 3 runs pretty much the same damn way as a GTX 680 on some level. Just the way that the software and the hardware are interfacing and the way that the game interacts with it. So that is why Tegra is so important right now. Whereas AMD... Maybe not quite to the same extent as NVIDIA in terms of developer relationships, but so much stronger than Qualcomm yeah, or yeah. Intel or... I mean, name anyone else. It's a, it's a two-horse race. ATI, NVIDIA, Radeon, GeForce. So I, I'd, I'd love for them to just kind of show up to that fight and start doing something. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> something. Uh, uh, something interesting. We were talking about graphics cards. Far Cry 3 really surprised me with how hard it was to run. I don't think Linus has played it yet, but you were a big fan of Far Cry 2, weren't you? I... no. Far Cry 2 was terrible. Oh, I thought you liked it. Far Cry 2 was a piece of crap. I thought you said you played it a whole bunch of times. I, Far, Far Cry 1. Oh. Loved Far Cry 1. Okay. Far Cry 1 was an outstanding game. Did you ever play it? You're a little like, young for that. Far Cry 1? Yeah. I Far Cry 1. What were you, like 9 when it came well, out? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure, because I was... maybe like 11. Uh, yeah, you were like a kid when Far Cry 1 came out. That's weird, I feel. I know. Weird. Yeah, I feel old. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, yeah, Far Cry 1 was good. No, Far Cry 2 was crap. The respawning guys. Oh, that stuff was crap. But... I, okay, you know what though? I, I forgot about this. This is a good story. Far Cry 2. I actually played it a fair bit because I hadn't really played, like I'd never played uh, Grand Theft Auto or like any other sort of open world sandboxy. So the, right, okay, yeah. So I'd never really done that whole, that whole thing. And the graphics were great and, you know, the gunplay is good and all of that. Um, I couldn't finish it. I got a save game, like all the way deep into the game. And did you play Far Cry 2? 
Yeah, but really, really quickly and once. Okay. One of the things is that you're sick. Do you remember that? Yeah. I okay, so. you get sick, so you have to get like malaria medications like sometimes. And uh, what happens is it gives you like a notification that you need to get malaria meds like soon. And so one of my save games, and I, I, I think it was auto, is it auto save for that game or something like that? Oh no, I, I was this is going. physically too far away to get anywhere with meds. I tried probably a dozen times in every direction and <laughs> every possible way. So I would just die. And I was like, well, I'm not starting over. <laughs> Because the whole game is just a grind. My best story with that is Morrowind. You start the game, and they give you this package. And you're supposed to go give it to this guy, but it's just like, oh yeah, give this package to this guy. And you can sell it. So at the beginning of the game, you're like, oh, I want money. You sell everything in your inventory. You're done. You can't start the main quest, but it doesn't exactly tell you what the main quest is, because it's a like uber definition of sandbox game, right? Like, amazing game. But you could just go screw off, like... I played this game for months and had no idea what the main quest was. Had never started it, had multiple characters, always sold the book or package thing. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, my dad and I were like, this game is amazing, but we know we're missing a lot. Let's go get the player's guide so we can find all the stuff that we're missing. But the player's guide, I was like, whoa, <laughs> there's a main quest and it's interesting. Let's that, go actually start playing the game. That is so much worse than mine that yeah. it's not even funny. <laughs> I love Morrowind. Logged so many hours in that game, but... Without even actually playing the game. Without playing the main quest. But that's how good that game was. Like, it didn't matter. I never got into it. I think it doesn't help, though, that I'd already logged, like, a bajillion hours on Oblivion. And then I tried yeah. to go back and play Morrowind. You kind of have to go through it later. Because I'd never played Morrowind before The journal that. system in Morrowind is very difficult to just pick up. You right. gotta be used to it. And like once you get I think it's the tribunal expansion, it makes it so you can actually navigate to individual quests in your right. journal. But before then, it's just your guy writing logs about things that's happening. And it's just like a journal. So if something happened a couple days ago and you've done a whole bunch of stuff to figure out where you're at at that quest, you have to like flip through pages and like <laughs> figure it out. Like it's it's not very noob friendly. And I, I I like I like I fired it up once and I got my character and I was gonna be like a cat dude and yeah. I went like down a path and it was just like <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Well, come on. <laughs> what, there's no like there's no like noob friendly like questing zone at the beginning? Like, a little bit, but not that much. The second you step much. like a little bit past the line, you're done. Like, no. And like it, it's got D and D rolling systems for attacks. So if you run up to something, you can be like, I'm not hitting you. Because <laughs> you'll just keep on rolling. And if you're not good enough at that skill, so like say dagger, I can just stab and stab and stab and stab and stab and never hit him. Be like, ha ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> My defense numbers are higher than your dagger rolling numbers. I then win because of the D&D system, right? So it's, it's not very noob friendly in that aspect. Right. Okay, well, I had a topic for discussion. Um... Why does Nero bother to still update their disk burning software? We talked about this a bit ago. <laughs> uh, the only thing I was able to come up with was compatibility with different systems. Okay, let me put it this way. It still I, works I uh, on everything. I have an ancient version of Nero that I bought way back, like early XP days. Back when you bought burning software, because now there's free... Okay, so okay, so aside from the fact that it doesn't need any new functionality, there's free options that are just as good now. Is that, so, is that maybe the thing then? They roll out a new version, make you buy the new version? That's make for... you buy the new version? How? They don't make you buy it. That same version runs on Windows 8. Just no, fine. No, I know, but like... Like, no if, cares if we're getting. If you have version 4, to get version 5, I'm just using Why random Why would you want numbers. version 5? I'm just saying, if you had version 4, to get version 5, do you have to buy it, or does it update? I think you have to buy it, yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's for people that aren't super tech savvy, and they're like, oh, I need the newest, best one. What could they possibly think they need the newest, best one for, though? I don't know. Like, Because everyone says, keep your stuff updated. Okay, why don't they just do this, then? Why don't they just lay off their entire development team, and, and just, just change numbers? Just change the numbers, and change, hire, reskin it. Hire some designers to reskin it, yeah. <laughs> Hire one designer and fire your entire development team. Like what I new, don't know. What new uh, functionality is there in disk burning over the last six years? Uh, Lightscribe? Lightscribe, MDisk. 
MDisk doesn't require so special software. Is that all done through the LG drive? All done through the special laser that engraves into the special medium. Nothing on the software side. Right, so it's just the drive. Yeah, um, so LightScribe and LightScribe. Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Is it the same on the software end? Okay, it's possible we need a Blu-ray software. Blu-ray burning. Who would burn a Blu-ray? <laughs> I'm just saying. Why? There might be something. Okay. For all of you out there who have burned a Blu-ray, I'm going to open your eyes to a fantastic world of, of amazingness that you are just going to be blown away by. It is called the archiving your stuff <laughs> on a hard drive system. <coughs> so Blu-ray discs, how much do they cost now? I don't know. I've never bought one. Last time I looked, it was around eight bucks, but I'm sure it's cheaper now. Let's say they're let's say they're three dollars, just for the sake of argument. Let's say they're three dollars. How many gigs of data do they store on them? It's twenty five, sure right? Someone's gonna correct us. Yeah, but then you can get uh, there's dual layered. Yeah, but those cost a lot. I'm sure they do. Yeah, like but... th those are actually like baller expensive. Yeah. So okay, so twenty five gigs on a Blu-ray. So here, this is this is a here. We're gonna do a quick price comparison here. So ncix.com. We're gonna look at how much a two terabyte external drive costs. So da 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 da, da, da around a hundred bucks. Okay. So that is two thousand divided by twenty five. Twenty five equals eighty Blu-ray discs. <laughs> so Blu-ray. Okay. It already loses time. Whoa, hold on. Okay, these are, okay, hold on. Blu-ray disc. There we go. So single Blu-ray disc, well, that's a 50 gig for seven bucks, okay? Okay, so that's a... That's and there's a, a rewritable for 10. By the way, hard drives are all rewritable. <laughs> and probably more than your rewritable disc. Okay, I can't even see, like, a, there's a two-pack for 30 bucks. Uh... How much do these things cost? These can't be right. Seriously? Okay, this is worse than I thought. Okay, so four... Okay, so... Oh, okay, so you can get them for as little as around a buck. But that's like Rosewill. So anything that's like a real, a real brand... Um, it's probably more like more like double that, so two about bucks. about two bucks each. So one hundred sixty dollars. Yeah, so one hundred and sixty bucks is what you're paying for your Blu-ray discs. Oh man, guys, just don't do it. I mean, something like this is so perfect. These backup pluses are great because they come on a little like dock thing. Here's a tech tip for you guys: back everything up to hard drives. So they come on a little dock thing. And then look at this. It's basically like the size of like a VHS cassette. So you just have a shelf. You like put these on it. You put a label on the handy dandy label friendly spot with some masking tape. Boom. You've archived your media on something that is less likely to degrade than, uh, than a plastic disc. On something that is much more, much, much more likely to still be around in the future in terms of finding something that'll read it easily. Although CDs have been pretty resilient, but then how useful is a CD at this point? You can repurpose it for other things. You could take the whole thing apart, repurpose it for an internal drive, throw it in a server. You can easily swap them in and out just by popping them onto a base station just like that. So, and you can plug as many or as few into your computer as you want. You, you can sync from one to another one, so you can back up from one to another. They're, they're faster to write. I mean, do, do I even need to do this? The only disk solution that I would ever see being better than that is like super, super, super important documents that you write to an M disk. Yeah, M disk I'm kind of sold on. M disk is kind of amazing, but then the capacities aren't that high. Because it's so, only DVD. Yeah, so use like backup hard drives like for just like pictures. Everything. And then, yeah, like hard drives for like movies and yeah. everything yeah. else. So M disk is like. Precious family photos or like your will. Baby pictures, wedding pictures, other very important things. Yeah. Super important documents, like you said, will, stuff like that. Um, but other than that, just go back up hard drives. Don't burn to Blu-rays. And like people think of it in terms of the transactional price, I think sometimes, because I've had people make the DVD archiving argument. And they're like, oh, well, DVD is only a couple cents. And I'm like, okay, it only holds four gigs. So you've got like... And how much is your time worth? I don't want to sit there burning 
<laughs> like, like you said, 80 Blu-rays. And then it's not even, it's not even easy to like figure out what you've now written to that disc and which disc has, cause okay, think about it this way. If you're like wedding video, part one, two, three, did, did you burn them in chronological order? Did you burn them in <laughs> alphabetical order? Did you burn like the pictures of the hot bridesmaids on the one over there so that your wife wouldn't see it? Like, I don't know. Is she watching this, you think? <laughs> it's probably okay. I have no idea. <laughs> she used to watch them. Now I think she got bored of them. I mean, it's tech stuff. What does, what does she care? Ultimately? Right, right. Um, what are their topics? Oh, today? yeah. Uh, like, okay, here's another one. Why do, people, why, do you bother, why do you bother updating a phone like Notepad app? Why do you bother writing a special Notepad app? Let's talk about Slick's phone because he loves his phone so huggy much. Tell me about S Note. I hate S Note. I, I have a perfect Note app though. Tell, tell me all about S Note. I want to hear about S Note. Why did Samsung sucks. write a Notepad application? Why did Samsung write any of the applications on that phone? Be nice. <sighs> I, uh, okay, just... you tried to use S Note for what? A couple weeks? Yeah, I was okay. So. Oh, did you know that the memo pad that comes on the iPhone works really well? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, Not a lot of functionality, so <laughs> just text input. But well, that's what I wanted. Okay, to be honest. Okay, why did you start using S Note? Here we go. Started using S Note for the live streams. If you guys see me or Linus when we're on the streams, if we're ever looking at our phones. It's because we have certain people watching the audience. Because we're that not are... interested in talking to you people. So just... <laughs> no, no. There's certain people that are in the audience that have our phone numbers that will text us if things are going wrong, like Ooh, audio. Really? Yeah. Okay, I do. Maybe okay. your friends don't care as much. But <laughs> I don't have any friends. That's the oh. issue. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Anyways, text me if there's audio problems. Uh, that's why I jump up sometimes. I'll hear my phone buzz and then just like dart over and see if one of my buddies is texting me saying there's an audio problem or something. Um, and because we keep our notes there. I'm looking at pictures of the baby that got sent to me throughout the day. He's eating green beans. It's pretty cute. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> um, we keep our notes there for the live stream, so we try and think of topics. So I was trying to use S-Note. Man, that was frustrating. Ah, if I did like the slightest thing wrong, so it would like go to a different tab within S-Note or anything, like if I clicked on anything that wasn't proper, it would move away from the stuff that I was currently typing and just delete everything. <laughs> oh my god so like we'd be on a really long car ride somewhere and i'd be like documenting all this stuff we're thinking of and like googling up topics that we can hopefully talk about so the live stream isn't boring as all hell and then i've got a whole bunch of stuff and i walk out of the car and like just sleep my phone and put it in my pocket go to open it up later and it's just like whoa nope all your lines are removed the app is still open but all your lines are removed i'm just like ah why so i ended up downloading some random app, I don't even know what it's called, it's called like Simple Note or something, and it's literally just a white screen and like a list of the documents that you have, and you just like click on them, and then it brings up just a white screen again, and then you can just like type wherever you want, and it's like, that's exactly what I wanted. All I wanted was a mirror of the Notepad app for PC. That's, what, that's all I wanted, but they had to add all this additional functionality, which barely works, and then the whole app barely works because everything else barely works. Just, ugh. We have to do our Windows 8 giveaway. So you had a question that you wanted to use as our trivia. So I'm going to brief them on who's sponsoring the giveaway in the meantime while you go remember what it was. Okay, one second. Okay, so guys, the, uh, the Windows 8 giveaway is sponsored by Timmy Tech TV. So we're going to go ahead and go to Timmy Tech TV's YouTube the channel. And I'm going to try to freaking... Get this going. All right, youtubes.com slash. I can't find the slash on this keyboard. I've had a lot of people ask me what keyboard this is, and it's some ASIO one. I actually don't remember. It's KB178RT. KB178RT. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it works, and uh, it kind of gets the job done. And we, oh, oh, really? No, I don't want to stay on this page. Go away. What is this? Oh, man, British Columbia mom makes $7,000 a month, and you won't believe how she does it. And it's not letting me leave. There we go. Leave. Not sponsored by that. Sorry for that, guys. Timmy Tech TV. 
There we go, Timmy Tech TV channel. So he has sponsored us four copies of, oh, look at that. He featured my channels on his channel. That was nice of him. Uh, he's, he sponsored me four copies of Windows 8 to give away on the next four live streams. So, oh, another thing, guys, there won't be a live stream next week because next week we will be in Vegas if we manage to stream something on Friday. And, oh, no, no, by Friday night we'll be on a plane, Slick. Yeah, not going to happen. We can't, do a, we can't do a live stream while we're there. Yeah, that's not feasible. He's giving me that look like he really, wa he really wants to live stream while we're when there. When will but... we be back? I'm sorry? When will we be back? Oh, we're not live streaming the night we get back from CES. If I can get everything set up, I'll drag him into a chair. But there's no promises. <laughs> I, might be, I might look like this in the chair. <laughs> Welcome I to will the try, live guys. stream. I will try, but there's no promises. Um, so anyway, have you, have you managed to figure this out yet? Uh, um, how do you, how do you watch ASCII Star Wars in Windows? Well, okay. Okay, guys, so the first one to tweet the correct answer, a hundred percent, letter for letter, perfectly, the correct answer to Slick's question here is the winner. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to fire up Twitter. And uh, here we go. Slick, come back. Ask your question. How do you watch ASCII Star Wars in Windows? And we're that's... looking for like the legit way to do it, not like going on YouTube and You're... searching for ASCII Star Wars. Yeah, like how do you like how do you do it? Like you can do this offline. Like how do you? Like the whole thing? It's it's seriously. Yeah. Okay, let's see. So the first one, the first one. Oh, hold on. We have at least one correct answer. Uh, never mind. You can actually, you have to be online. Okay, you have to be online. Fine. But like, that's not the point. That's not what I'm trying to prove. Like, you don't have to open a browser. There we go. Okay, here we go. So, wow. Bam. <laughs> Kevin knew the answer. I did not think that would be that easy. But... Okay, Kevin, I am going to follow you on Twitter so that you can private message me, private message me. You are getting a free copy of Windows 8. Congratulations, Timmy Tech TV is gonna send that to you and uh, you should be super thrilled because it uh, doesn't work in Windows 8 as well? Apparently. I All didn't right. know that it did, but apparently. So you can go watch your ASCII Star Wars and your brand new copy of Windows 8. Thanks guys for participating and I hope you found it to be a little bit more organized this week compared to last, oh, last week was a disaster. Did you watch it? I ended up watching, yeah. It was terrible. I just... I don't blame you though, but like... It ugh. was bad. I, well, ugh. I, okay. I, that's why I tried to pick something more structured. You knew what a long day I'd had that day already. Plus, I think you have a better understanding now of how much I'm able to sleep at night. <laughs> Between my cat and my baby, it is a miracle that I get any rest at all. It's helped the forum, but yeah. Yeah, yeah it's helped the forum indeed. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sound card and headset for 7.1 gaming. First of all, get a proper headphone or headset with two speakers in it. Agreed? Yep, 100%. Yep, 100% agreed. Find some sound card that does some cheese ball surround effect if you really want that. It will be better. It will honestly sound better. I have owned yeah. both, and actual 7.1 doesn't <laughs> sound as good as really good high-quality headphones with software trickery. Surround. Like, Soft software trickery is where it's at, guys. Remember, guys, two ears. Two speakers is all you need. And I know that question was Googleable, but pretty much any question that we're going to be able to come up with is going to be Googleable, and... The people that answered were really quick. Yeah, they were fast enough that they probably knew. They probably just knew it. Um, and you'll always be at an advantage if you actually know the answer, which yeah. is which is great. Kind of the point. Guys, actually, oh, have you do, have you seen that virtual haircut thing? No. No. Okay. Uh, mandatory mandatory assignment here, guys. Everyone needs to after the live stream. Of course, you need to stay and watch us first. Um, search for virtual barbershop this is oh, i recognize this maybe i have this is all the evidence you need there it is use headphones close your eyes and you basically oh yeah i have heard of this yes definitely it okay. sounds like you're getting a haircut if you needed evidence that you only have two ears and you only need two speakers 
that is it. So there you go. If you're in a home theater setting, 7.1 is awesome. When, when the speakers are directly covering your entire ear, it's... It's so cool, though. Have, okay, did, did, have you tried it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I thought you were talking about something. No, 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 no. I, was I just didn't know you were still that. on the audio topic. No, it's so friggin' cool. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's definitely. like the best thing ever. You should definitely go watch it, listen right, to it. That's what do we got? MS-DOS also. Well, apparently it works in MS-DOS as well. Cool. Yeah, it works in, like, tons of stuff. I think it might work in uh, Linux as well. Don't okay. quote me on that. Got a bunch of answers here. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Do, 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 do. We have one guy who answered Star Wars. <laughs> well, yes, that would be a way to watch Star Wars in Windows. Very, Very carefully. carefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Offline mode in Safari, apparently. I don't know how, how many people install Safari on their Windows machines. No, it, uh, yeah. I do. Download on iTunes and play through QuickTime. Justin, you're fired. <laughs> I like it, though. Buy a CD. <laughs> it wasn't the point, guys. <laughs> Here's Windows Media Player. <laughs> These guys are, like, trying to legit answer, like, the question. <laughs> and it's like, no, no, it's, it's, it's a trick. It's like a trick question. I didn't want to say it was a command line input. Because yeah, because that's, like, yeah, that's too obvious. Yeah, because you could just say, like, I wanted the Google search to be at least... Not 100% straightforward. By getting a job and buying it. <laughs> yes! The Extreme Computing. <laughs> you are the winner of tonight's live stream. You don't get a copy of Windows, but you get our respect. You get all the internet cookies. All the internet cookies. <laughs> OMG, Slick is so hot. And I think Julie isn't the only girl who actually thinks so. No. <laughs> don't. Continue onwards. Keep going. <laughs> I will hurt you. <laughs> Just keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're moving on. We're moving on. Uh, oh, big NVIDIA announcement at CES. Okay, I'm kind of curious about this. Deacon usually tweets pretty good stuff. Live from Las Vegas. How to tune into NVIDIA's news. Oh, we're missing this. We're not going to be there in time. So whatever's yeah we're we're going down on uh, oh wait what Sunday no it's during the day Sunday we don't arrive till Sunday night oh. so yeah we're we're missing we're missing it there's like a live show it's like a big event Whoa, I'll watch it then I have no idea what they're uh, what they're talking about but it should be should be pretty cool maybe it's the their things coming out of beta no it's probably a lot bigger than that. Yeah, the GeForce experience is cool, but I don't think this it's is going to be. It's probably a lot bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, they're making like a really big deal out of this. Uh, what case? 300R or 692 Advanced? Did I say 600R? Because I meant to say 300R. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd go 300R. Yeah, I, think. I probably would. Too, Just the like... more, the more modern feature set. Just is a good thing. Uh, I've but... built in the 300R more. Yeah. Which gives it kind of an unfair advantage because I, I kind of know it. I only did a 692 advanced build a long time ago, but it's a good case. I haven't built in one. I've just seen it Oh, a really? Yeah. No, it's really good. Like, okay. it's easy to build in. Everything's really intuitive. Cooler Master does such a good job of that. No, I know. I know. Uh, just I've built in the 300R a lot. I haven't built in the other one. So that's why I didn't actually ever give a suggestion. But I kind of would just lean towards that one because that's the only one I have personal experience with. Slick looks familiar. Hey, you could easily be a, like a, a mesh between these two guys <laughs> and this one. <laughs> need a haircut. Well, yes. <laughs> I might need a touch up before we go as well. <laughs> I'm like, I was, you can, you can ask my roommate. I'm like, I was planning to get a haircut literally like three months ago. Um, it just never happened. Chris Berry wins all the internets. We have to take the internets away from whoever won it last time because that is the most creative spelling of Wednesday I have ever seen. <laughs> it isn't even a space. <laughs> it's not capitalized. Like, let's try to find how many things are wrong with this. It's not capitalized. Not capitalized. There's a space. There's a space. The, the, the D and the N. The D and the N are reversed. Uh, there's a missing E. There's a missing E. Okay. 
It has like a a 50 exclamation <laughs> marks. <laughs> the sentence isn't capitalized. You don't need a like there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Chris! <laughs> we love you, man. Welcome to the internet. I have. What's BitCast's infinite drive? I'm not familiar with that, unfortunately. Maybe we should look into that after. Sure. Um, Blu-ray burners for giving others huge amounts of data without giving them a whole hard drive. And BDXL is 125 gigs. Okay, but how much does a BDXL cost? So that still holds with sort of what we're saying. And if I ever give people huge amounts of data, um, it's usually not like, here, archive this. It's usually like, here, take this really quickly. And I would use... Nah, yeah, I was going there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would use a flash drive, man. I would use a flash drive or I would like FTP it to them yeah. or I would use a Dropbox okay. system. So or for anything. the cost of your Blu-ray discs to match that two terabyte capacity, you could buy your two terabyte hard drive and a big fat USB drive. And, and they're like, rewritable. So... Again, yeah. But, and, like... and you could get like a baller one like this that's impossible to destroy, survivor style. For the win. They're pretty epic. Yeah. But, like, I, I, I understand he's trying to play devil's advocate. He's trying to, like, spur the conversation, but I just still don't think it's feasible. What summoner name do you play and what region do you play on? <sighs> Shout out to Henry Pham. Yeah. I back up my Wii and PS2 games on D. Okay, yes, you can back up your games on... That's a legitimate reason to have... Well, sort of legitimate reason to have a burner. If he's actually doing it. Hey, look at that. Look how the color changes when I switch these. It's better on this one. See how yellow we look? Because you can have different settings natural. in the scenes. I know, but I think I must have messed up scene one. Well, we were in kind of a hurry in my defense. Yeah, I've, whatever. At least it's working. Want to replace my two... See, this is the problem that I have with the case guys who don't use standard fan sizes. And I mean, I know 200 mil and 160 mil and 180 mil and 230 They're all kind of standard fan sizes. But I mean by standard, like someone actually makes replacement fans for it. Yeah. Um, BitPhoenix is doing a good job of supporting the fan sizes that they generate. And BitPhoenix fans look really cool. They're one of the only brands they that They perform like, okay. Yeah, no, I know. Their pro Alchemy Pros are good fans. I'm not saying they don't. Just oh, okay. like a lot of people, like, I love Noctua fans, but look at them. And then put one beside a BitPhoenix fan and just like get a 13-year-old kid to pick which one he thinks is cooler. Okay. Like the Bit Phoenix fans look awesome. By that law, okay, so what? I should make all the decisions in my life based on what 13 year olds think are cool? Do you have any of those in your system? They're like your favorite fans. Do you have any of them in your system? No. <laughs> but they're the best! <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know they're. Come on. <laughs> Why am I fist bumping you? You just burned me. I shouldn't be acknowledging this at all. They just look atrocious. And like, okay, if you have... Okay, like, fine. I will put NFF12s in the basement of my TJ07. In the basement. Keyword. <laughs> Actually, I won't put them there. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't because you're going to put silver stones, aren't you? Yeah, I have air penetrators. APs, yeah. <laughs> there are, okay. Okay, okay, fine. Here, let me put it this way then. If I was building a... Ooh. I was going to say, if I was building a machine that had a closed side panel, I'd use them, but... My wife's machine does not use Noctua's. <laughs> I have, I have a test bench with Noctua's on it. <laughs> isn't the, that's the point of the test bench, though, isn't it? To perform really well. <laughs> no, to report back sounds and stuff for fans. You're using a consolidated fan format. No, no, not Noctua's. that one. No, no, the other test bench, the one, one with the, the Cougar HA? power supply. Oh, we never used that one. We do sometimes. <laughs> we never use it. It has one. P12s on it. We used we used it for months. We used that test bench almost exclusively because, for months. Because no, not almost exclusively. Because I needed another test bench, and you said, "Here's a bunch of hardware. Build one." And I grabbed those fans. No, I changed. No, no, you don't remember because I changed them out when I was trying to do acoustic <laughs> testing on video cards. Okay. I needed fans that could run near silent on the actual CPU cooler itself so that I could take sound readings from the video card on an overclocked CPU system without the CPU fans ramping up like crazy. They are the best fans. But you didn't care about the look of it because it was on a performance-based test bench. But 
if it was a choice between these and ones that didn't perform well at all, I would go with these. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, but, I, I love Noctua fans. I just can't bring myself to install them on my system because they're ugly. But AP-121s are like... They look great and they perform well. They're 90% as good. Gentle Typhoons are... You could argue as good, but I wouldn't run them at those kinds of RPMs. Yeah. So I would take a Noctua over Gentle Typhoons, to be perfectly honest. Like, Gentle Typhoons don't look that great, but I think they look better than them. Gelid Wings aren't that great, but they're pretty good. And they look really good. And they good. look really good. Yep. UV, UV blue in my system is like... Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, there was someone I promised to do a... Uh, there was someone I promised to do a shout out to this week. And I, I gotta go... I gotta go check. Uh, I don't know what to discuss. <laughs> I don't well, have any topics. Twitter Q&A. Twitter q and I forget how to do this. Right. Ah, noobs can play shout out. Shout out to Noobs Can Play. Peace, bro. Linus, why did you get a no record found? Um, uh, uh, <laughs> we're not gonna vote. we're not gonna talk about problems with the search function on NCX's website. Uh, have you heard about Linus? Has you have you heard about vortex-based video? No. No, I've never heard of this either. I use my iPhone Notepad Notes app all the time. That's one thing I do have a problem with is the Notes app on iOS products is kind of awesome. And I have a lot of problems with the one on my Android. But then, like I said, I downloaded a new one, which is an awesome thing about Android. And then it totally solved the problem. Okay. We have another Samsung topic to discuss. The Evolution Kit. You mentioned this, but yes. didn't go into detail. Continue. So this is, this is some CES news. They first unveiled this last year. So the Evolution Kit, get this. This face should give you some idea how stupid I think this is. <laughs> I was already kind of like, uh... <laughs> the Evolution Kit allows you to take your 2012 model smart TV and by adding <laughs> a pack to the back of it to meet the ongoing, you know, memory and processing <laughs> and power Jeez. requirements of smart TVs and the media and everything that's happening. <laughs> you can upgrade your 2012 Smart TV to the 2013 version by putting this pack on the back. <laughs> I feel like if I was in the store, I would buy it just so you would go away. <laughs> just go away. <laughs> so you get the latest suite of applications. Okay. You get... Um, Why do you need a pack for applications? Well, this is the first question that I was sort of thinking. Oh, okay. Continue. Sorry. Well, I guess, actually, no. My first question is, why do you need a smart TV at all? Why don't you buy a Pivos EOS and hook it up to your TV? And, like, and then you'll get the... firmware updates for free. Oh, 100%. And I've heard a lot of pro problems with the gestures. Okay. Like, tons of problems with the gestures. Do you remember that Samsung all-in-one that we had, that yeah. we did an unboxing of? Yeah. I tried to demo the gesture thing. I didn't get a single bit of usable footage. It just doesn't work. And the gestures on the TV, at the keynote at the Samsung Canada thing, the guy on stage was trying to demo it, and it didn't work at all. Gestures are going to be incredible when they work really well, but, but we're not there yet. Here's the thing. To actually build in the hardware that would be required to properly map the human body in any kind of remotely reasonable real time, and I'm not talking connect with like you know a half second delay. Okay, it's not a half second, but with, a, with any kind of lag or any kind of ambiguity as to what you're doing for it to actually work perfectly so that it can recognize you whether you're standing like this or whether you're like you know on the couch like this the, I mean it would basically need a computer in it and like there's a lot of little companies and some bigger companies making some really interesting hand gesture ma uh, programs for computer and stuff but there's still tons of problems with them tons of problems I mean the closest I think will be is like a glove have you seen? For now. Yeah, have you seen that like weird, crazy, multicolored glove? Uh, no, I haven't seen. that I one. can't remember what they're called, but it it looks like you like spilled a whole bunch of different colored paints on a glove. Okay. And they wear them, and the gestures you can do with them are insanely accurate. Okay, see, something like that could work. And guys, please, for the love of peanuts, uh, stop asking us if we heard about the leap motion. Yes, we have heard about the leap motion. Yes, it's cool. It is not out yet. I cannot unbox it yet. I have been in touch with them. We're going to arrange to get something going once they actually have units that they can ship. But uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I think this could be 
bridging the gap between the touchscreen interface and the totally not touchscreen, you know, for those folks who don't want to touch their screen, for folks who are too far away from their monitor and this is uncomfortable, they could still go up and go like this. Um, if it works, then like, awesome, it should be really cool. Otherwise, you know, we'll all forget about it at some point. Uh, Apparently S Note is really good on Note 2 because of S Pen support. That's kind of cool to hear, but doesn't help all the incredible amount of S3 owners. Out Which, there. by the way, is more than any other smartphone ever. Bam. So, like, that's awesome, and I'm happy it works good for you, and S Pen is pretty cool, but, like, there's a billion of us. Maybe more than that. I was trying to just pick a really big number. Oh, that that's S3s. a good idea. Do you think it's the transparent OLED display they were showing a while back? No, because if they sh they've shown it before, I kind of doubt it. <sighs> yeah, because they're talking about like whole new design and like shape of the TV and stuff. So unless they took that and shaped it differently. I, um, so. I am building an X79 rig now and Slick runs a Z77 rig now. So I guess both of us will be waiting for the next chipset before we make any upgrades. <laughs> I use Blu-ray for backing up my Blu-ray movies. No, you should use a hard drive for backing up your Blu-ray movies. Okay. Whoa, that's a lot of yeah. Sorry, if you tweet that many times, I'm going to have to skip it. Yes, we are going to have an X40 and X60 in a review, comparison, and conclusion. We haven't had time. We're going to use the standardized test bench. I'm actually going to have to do some fancy dremeling to make the X60 fit in it. But that's okay. We're going to do it. Um, so yeah, we will do that, but it'll be once we get back from CES. Yin Yik. I am very sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, Jin Yik. Jin Yik? Jin Yik. Jin Yik. Jin Yik. Okay, Jin Yik. Um, Dun -yuk, Dun -yuk. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you didn't do it again when I start talking, aren't you? Oh, okay. Dun -yuk. So I don't know, probably not for an incredibly long time, but if you're interested in that kind of stuff, Google up Oculus Rift. Mm. That's the closest thing we're going to be getting in the near future. They're awesome. Look it up. You can pre-order them. What are you talking about? Which? Which one easily dies? Sorry, you, those are totally, totally different things in every possible way. No, I wouldn't really recommend a GT640. Anything under 100 bucks for a graphics card is not a good value. And I don't mean it's not cheap. It is cheap, but it's not a good value because value is, I, I think of in terms of frames per second per dollar. I actually had someone giving me a really hard time on, uh, on Twitter because I wouldn't recommend a GT uh, or a GTX uh, 650 to someone. And I was like, GTX 650 is not a good value. I said, I, and they were like, oh, Linus, not everyone, you know, blah, 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 can get a, the best card. And you guys are so focused on GTX 660 TIs and 670. I was like, well, no, actually, it's, you can get a 650 TI. But the difference in performance between a 650 and a 650 TI is like this. And the difference in price is like this. Value is FPS per dollars, not just dollars. So a 640 is never a good value because it costs like 80% of what something way better costs, but it'll perform like half as well. So it's a terrible, terrible value. Never you, buy entry level video cards. You got to look into the price per performance yes. curves. And like if you're buying a, like a, a card like that, it's going to be obsolete so quick. Yeah. Do you know where I can buy modded cases? I don't know. No, I mod them myself. Buy a Dremel and some like panels from Home Depot or wherever you buy okay. Home Depot stuff. Well, I think that wraps it up for now. Thank you guys for tuning in to our shortened live stream. Hopefully two weeks from now when we do the next live stream, you guys will be able to um, tune in on time because we'll be like ready. And I'm sure we'll have tons more topics. It's been oh, kind of yeah. dead lately because everyone's just kind of calm before the storming because of CES. Yeah. So, so we're going to have way, way too much stuff to talk about. Yeah, instead of just like We might have topics. to do like a deluxe, like longer live stream or something. Maybe we'll talk about it in the, uh, in the cool down from CES. We'll plan lo like one, like a debriefing. Maybe we do like a three or five hour live stream or something like that. As just... long as we get a huge list of comments, I mean uh, topics and people are willing to come around, I'm cool with it. Yeah, okay. All right, good night, guys. Thanks for tuning in.